<laughs> it's Thirsty Thursday. So this means it's time for Wine Antics Live. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Jen. I'm a certified wine lo lover and your co-host for today's Wine Antics. Uh, we are bringing a phenomenal guest to the table today. We have a fashion, a lifestyle expert, uh, an amazing guy that I cannot keep up with behind the scenes waiting to talk to us. Um, tonight, before we get to Patrick, I want to take, take a moment and shout out to the, the wine. The wine of the hour, which I'm drinking, is a Bending Branch Tempranillo. And this is a Texas wine. It's probably why my cheeks are so rosy right now, because <laughs> it's it's... It's got the heat. It brings the heat. It's a good bottle of wine. And I've got my, even got my little Aravana there so I can have a push to start uh, aeration. So without much further ado now, it's time to introduce you lucky people to Patrick T. Cooper, the fashioneer. Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone this evening? I'm Patrick T. Cooper. Jen, thank you for having me on the show. I love wine antics. I love to keep up with you guys. And it's amazing to be here. Tonight, 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 I am drinking. I made me some little cheat cards because this is my first time going live. So tonight, I am drinking Edel House wine. Uh, it's an amazing um, blue wine. Uh, a friend of mine developed the wine. We were traveling in San Moritz for snow polo. And Rodney Foster out of Washington, D.C. developed the wine. And uh, it's perfect, either chill or warm. I'm going to zoom in like Jen does. And you, to be honest, I've been drinking already. Um, so tonight I'm just thanking um, Edel Heist, as well as Tipsy Tags. Tipsy Tags makes these amazing little ornaments for your wine. So that when you get drunk, well, I should say tipsy, tipsy, when you get tipsy, you know which glass is yours. So tonight, thank you for having me, Wine Antics, and I am here, the fashioneer, to celebrate fashion and always great wine. Wow. Thank you, Patrick. Like, if I was on edge or I didn't know what I was going to say or where I was going with any of this, you just you just set me up really nice because we all like to admit that we drink, you know, a little bit before any big event. And every Thursday when I come on here, it's a big event for me. And, and I love bringing new people on. I love uh, the new experiences and sharing great wine with the audience. So, uh we cannot forget the one man who is as dapper as you, sir, Stubb from Cork MV, my co-host. Hi, friends. I am Stubb from Cork MV. I'm a filmmaker, writer, uh, television host, I guess, uh, contributor. And um, yeah, Patrick, I'm very happy you're here tonight. Thanks for making me step up my fashion game a little bit. <laughs> you know, I appreciate that. Uh, but we are very happy to have you here tonight and uh, are excited to talk to you about all things fashion and wine and how those two things relate to each other. All right. All right. So let, let me get this party started as we work on things behind the scenes here. Uh, today, you know, I was thinking, okay, when we talk about fashion, when we talk about wine, what is the immediate country that comes to mind? For me, it's Italy. Okay. The, thinking about from Rome to Milan, it's like fashion, uh, the height of culture, the height of civilization, the height of the lifestyle that we all aim to have. I mean, I do. I want to sit around and uh, eating amazing food and watching amazing people walk around in amazing fashion. That's the height of me. But like m skipping back to even history, like in Italy, the most like what, is, what should I say? Not the most important, but um, yeah, I'm just going to restart. going to restart there. <laughs> in Italy, the most important two decisions people make in a day are, are what to eat and what to wear. And that, I think, just kind of summarizes how we talk and think about fashion and how we think about wine. Like, th it's, it's part of your day. It's part of the what, what you wear. It's part of the ambiance of what you're living in. And I think that's such a great start to the connection of fashion and wine. Stubb, what do you, what do you think? 
done that. Uh, the two of the most important decisions I make in a day are what I'm going to eat and what I'm going to wear. Cause for some reason, law doesn't let me just walk outside without anything on. And, um, you know, which is probably a good thing for all those around. Um, I do love that connection though. Um, I like to liken it. You mentioned the food and the wine and I like to liken it when you go out for a celebratory dinner. Uh, you really want to, you know, up your game a little bit fashion wise and whether you're taking a bottle to the restaurant or ordering something nice off of a nice wine list there, you also want to up that game. So I think about those two things going hand in hand, you're dressed up a little bit. You're probably going to be more willing to either open or, uh, order a nicer bottle of wine than you would, uh, normally order. How's that? That, that sounds fabulous. Yeah. Patrick, what do you think are the biggest connections you've seen in, in being the fashioneer between wine and the, the lifestyle that is fashion? Well, I'll say this. My most, I, when I think about it, I always think that most people deny themselves the opportunity to just be great or just to be out of the ordinary and be original. And uh, I, literally this month, uh, one of my best friends uh, and I are talking about channeling Dominique Devereaux from Falcon Crest. I'm sorry, Dynasty. And if you if you look at these old episodes of of soap operas, the the characters are always like done to the nines. And today, in today's society, specifically in the United States, I'm not dogging the United States, but everyone is so casual. And I think wine and lifestyles go together. And so many of us are so busy with life that we don't take the time to just celebrate where we are at that particular moment. And the reason why this wine particularly is important to me, um, we literally were at a snow polo match and everyone looked amazing in San Moritz. And so my friend, we, we tasted the wine and we immediately, we didn't know anything about warm wine. And now every time I sip this wine, I'm so proud of him with his uh, evolution because it was centered around fashion. It was centered around lifestyle. It was centered around polo. It was centered around all the things that I love and really living a bolder and bigger life. And so when I think about those things, those are the things that I embody when I open a bottle of wine. I really call myself being an adult and um, I open a bottle of wine and I become an adult. So most of the time, in the, especially in the winter months, I drink more of my reds so that I can feel really, really engaged, uh, really warm. And then in the summer months, I go to my whites, more citrusy, more fun. Um, basically, it's what I'm feeling at that particular moment. To be honest, it's really what my wardrobe looks like. And then I really pair my wines based upon my movements, how I feel before I get ready to go out. Um, and I basically style myself that way. It's, it's, it's just that simple. I'm not a sommelier. Uh, I'm not an expert. I just love great taste and I love what I love. And fortunately, my career has spun in a direction where people value my opinion. I've become an authoritative figure on what's hot and what's not. So it's, um, it's, it's amazing because a lot of people now, they're just being so casual. And I think anytime you get a chance to celebrate, you should in grand style. Oh, absolutely. I'm totally there with you. I can imagine you wearing all white now and having a, a fabulous uh, Chenin Blanc. Can you? <laughs> Patrick, I love the... Uh, the I feel you know. like a news anchor right now. I'm like literally <laughs> cut at the body right here. My glam squad just left the building. They <laughs> is perfect, okay. right? It's like, you know, I, I want to make sure I stay in queue. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just voguing. You're messing yeah. with us. You're just voguing now. So the the yeah. real Patrick T. Cooper will be all outside of the box. All the hands, <laughs> the box, everything. And especially after you all get me drinking a little wine. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stuff, he's really good at this. He's no, really good at taking I, I love somewhere. it. Uh, <laughs> no, that's great. Let's I was, aerate the wine. Let's aerate the wine. I, I want to say I love, Patrick, the way you talked about, you know, wine and fashion sort of in the same way. You drink what you're feeling. Um, and when you were saying that, all I could think of is texture. 
um, right. is important in both wine and fashion, both. Absolutely. Um, and, and I love that. That's, that's really where you, where you got me thinking. And I think about texture and wine when I'm drinking wine and um, maybe not as much in fashion, honestly, personally, but um, I love that comparison there. And you sort of, well, uh, need that. To, look I love it. Tonight, to look at you tonight, you layered, you, you're full of texture. You have a tweed jacket, a beautiful red tie, oh. then you mixed it with a V-neck and then your white classic base, you know, your white classic shirt. Mm -hmm. That's texture. That's layering. All design, all aspects of beauty are always layered. Most of the most of the time, when we open Architectural Digest, most of us die to have our homes looking like Architectural Digest, but we don't look at the layering mm -hmm. and the work that goes into it. I think one of the most important things I didn't get a chance to thank to thank Geiger PR because that's how Jen and I met. Um, we were at a Texas wine conference mm -hmm. and. The people, the 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 passion, the excitement that was centered around the wine mm -hmm. um, is what is engaging. I'm not an expert on wine, but I can definitely tell you when someone is passionate about what they do, and that draws me in. So, honestly, the next step from that is let's taste the wine and let's see what's good about the wine. And then most most of the time with these small business and remote locations. They are so hands-on that they are just willing to share every ounce of the journey and talk about the challenges, the ups and downs, what, what they experience along the journey that then makes the wine better. So again, taking all of those things into account, it's about learning what really fits you and not really trying to be a clone of what everyone else is doing. Go out and find what wine works for you and what you know, wet your whistle for lack of better words. That is awesome. And so I want to ask you how you, uh, you know, just a little bit of your experience in fashion for our viewers here. Um, and then how that brought you into broader lifestyle uh, elements as well, spe specifically with the wine. Um, if we can talk about that for a moment, or if you could talk about that for a moment. Well, that's a great question. Um, I started my career as a fashion stylist and my work and my body of work uh, can be seen um, over the years for the red carpets of, of the Oscars, the Golden Globes, the Grammys, you name it, I dressed someone for that. Um, that then turned into creative direction for fashion brands, in which case it controlled the all of the campaigns, all the content that someone would put out on a, on a marketing platform, that then grew into commentation of fashion in an editorial setting for magazines. And from that, it, it has sort of snowballed where I've paid the dues and now I can sort of reap the benefits. I'm still working hard. So anyone looking at this, it's not always easy. It's not always glamorous. I think Jen and I touched on that. It's not, this is hard work. I, I was just, I don't, I, I won't complain um, because some people don't, can't experience the joy that I experience on, a, on an everyday basis. But I will say there's a lot of product. There are a lot of people out in the world that have great brands. And I get a, an influx of that on a daily basis. So now my job is really to, to go through those emails, look at what's hot and what's not, and then try to be the voice of the new trends or what's coming, what's hot and what's not, um, and, and certain elements of that. So literally my career, fashion stylist to now, Patrick T. Cooper is a brand. And yeah. I'm thankful for that. I am, I am, sometimes I have to pinch myself uh, because I, I look at um, my career and it's, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. I've seen some, some great things in my life. I've seen some great parts of the world and I'm ready to see more. And so uh, it, it literally, Jen and I, wine antics, and this would not have happened had it not been for the willingness to explore different regions of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah. a lot of, oh, one point that I really wanted to make to the wine. wine Hold on now. One point he really wants to make. <laughs> oh, okay. Real me back in, real me okay. back. <laughs> well, let me 
ask you this before we get into your point. And don't forget it. I know. I know that happens when we start talking and we start drinking wine. But okay. like, I, I love the fact that you mentioned that you have paid your dues and you've dressed some of the best dressed in Hollywood and on the on the runway leading up to events. Do you see wine happening? these uh, behind the scenes events and what kind of wine are people drinking are they drinking everything or are they tell me what they're oh, drinking because i haven't been in one of them parties <laughs> well, you always have to, well you're going to la jen i know right you know what you might end up doing when you get to los angeles um there is always i i can remember my opportunities and my time working with um sean john and sean puppy Cone. there's always a celebratory Champagne toast, whether that's Dom Perignon or Moe, um, and even my work with Anne Barge, when brides would come into the atelier um, and try gowns with the mother of the bride and, and the beautiful bride to be, or, or, or the, the 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 entire bridal party. Yeah. When a when a woman chooses a gown that really fits, there's a champagne. And so most people love that opportunity to toast a magnificent moment in their lives. So wine and fashion, they are, it's, it's, it's synonymous. It works together. It's seamless. I love that connection with the, the most important, well, some would argue the most important day in a woman's life is that day that they go from being a, a, a young woman to be, then being a wife. It's very ceremonial, very important for a lot of women. Um, my, my good friend recently just went in to pick out her wedding dress and oh, wow. don't lie. D don't even let me lie. Cause I had a bottle of uh, bubbly in my purse ready for her and the bells rung and the, and the drinks were drank. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's so. It's it's so amazing that the don't, big part. Don't fall down the aisle now. Don't fall down the aisle. No, 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 no. That I, <laughs> I'm the maid of honor, so I will have to try to keep her up. And if anybody knows me, this is going to be each other supporting one another. <laughs> going down that aisle um but you're so right like it's it's ingrained in our culture it's that connection it's it's been as as i tried to mention earlier throughout history it's been ingrained in culture and civilization mm -hmm. so i'm i love this topic of how we've evolved fashion wise culture wise lifestyle wise to continue the the civilized uh lifestyle picture that we paint with wine now uh, Step. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. We took a we take a very lighthearted approach to wine, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people that really connect wine with the, a civilized lifestyle. It's it's changing a little bit, but it's still it's still there's so many words of expression and and description when it comes to wine that it just connects with being very civilized. I'll agree with you on that, Jen, and and then say a few words and then pass off a question to Patrick here. Yeah. Um, cause I, I was kind of thinking of words and phrases and things to ask him as we were, as, as I was preparing for tonight's show. Um, I do, you know, I've said for, since I started Cork and Me, uh, you can take wine seriously without taking yourself too seriously. And, uh, Patrick earlier in the show, you know, talked about, you know, living large and being, you know, I'm paraphrasing and, and, and being outside the box and trying new things. Um, and in prepping for the show, my thought with him, I really thought of like, off the rack uh, was a phrase, and I kept kind of coming around to that. How do we how do we compare like off the rack, uh, you know, fashion and off the rack wines? And what I mean by that is, I try to introduce people in what I do to wines that they may not have necessarily otherwise tried. Um, and I think Patrick, you're in the same boat in the fashion world as well, trying to get people to think outside of the things that they normally do. They're going to go to, you know. XYZ department store and buy the same, you know, socks and underwear and whatever. And they're going to replace their, you know, white or blue button down shirt every, ever so often, uh, or a certain skirt, uh, in a woman's wardrobe. Uh, how do you relate those two things and how do you get people to think outside of their own fashion box in that sense? Well, the, my thought process on that, um, what I've seen to be true, and this is just from my perspective, um, because I'm in my body. Um, but, and that may not have made any sense to people, but I can say this. A lot of times um, in the United States, we have a lack of um, 
people living authentically to who they are. Um, we don't celebrate um, authenticity and just originality. And by that, I mean, it's okay to not know. It's okay to not be the smartest person. That's the reason they make sommeliers. That's the reason why they go test and they study and all those things. It's okay to say, I don't know anything about wines. It's okay. That's why you read. That's why you find experts. That's why you open yourselves up to experts and not go to a dinner party and try to seem like you are an expert and embarrass yourself. So when I think about those things, um, that's why they have experts. So when you say off the rack and, and elements like that, people that come to you have to be willing to accept that you're an expert. You are an expert in your field and not, um, not shun you for your expertise. Simply put, it's, it's, it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times what the point that I was coming back for Jen is a lot of times people are intimidated by why a lot of people are not, as comfortable as comfortable in their skin as we are, mm -hmm. um, because we're on live, um, they're not as comfortable. And so they're looking for expertise. They're looking for a guiding light. They're looking for someone to grab their hand and show them and expose them to what's great and what's not. And then once they experience that, they then uh, become aware and they can take the next steps to understanding, well, I really like a red, or I really like a white, I like more tannins, I, like, I don't like, you know, those elements. So I'll be the first person to say, I'm no expert. I just simply know what I like. And then most of the time, um, I try those, but I also am always willing to listen and learn. And I so think that, that's the most important element. You make a good point there. I get some pushback sometimes with people recommending wines or pouring wines for people. Um, do you get that same pushback when you're styling people sometimes where I don't want to try this cut or I don't look great in this color or, you know, whatever, whatever their holdup is, or, you know, I'm, I need to lose 10 pounds before I wear something that form fitting, whatever it is, do you get that pushback? And how do you well, push people to go ahead and try those things? Um, to as show I, them that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> as I pour a little bit more wine, I can't get the cap off of this too fast. I can't get it off. No, just kidding. Um, the thing that I can say about working as a fashion stylist, and I don't work in that capacity mm -hmm. that much anymore. Most of my styling is really more for editorial content mm -hmm. and for the magazine. Okay. Um, and I, um, I don't envy the young people that want to be fashion stylists at all. Um, what I can say is that, yes, your point is very valid. You will have entourages of people with um, artists, celebrities that will say, oh, no, you shouldn't wear that. And my thought process will be, well, why do you have me here? So with that being said, when you're an expert on wine or you sommelier and things like that, when you garner a, cer a, a certain clientele that wants to tell you how to do your job, you have to bid them adieu. Bye. Thank you. Uh, next client. Pretty much. That's what uh, it is. You know. It's That's like you've been doing I this a minute or something. <laughs> it's like you've been doing this a little while. Um, and As I'm trying to get the top off. You know, for all, for all the antics that we have going on right now, Patrick, you really have a very positive message that you put out on social media. I love not only seeing where you're traveling and where you're going, but you have a ton of very inspirational uh, graphics and messages and, and sayings that you put out that are along the line of, you know, be confident in yourself. Like you're saying, try something new. Don't let the past, you know, impact your future and always a lot of encouragement. And I just wanted, I wanted to recognize that and share that with the audience too, because it's, it is lifestyle. It's not just wine. It's not just fashion. It's not just entertainment. It's not just Patrick's story as history, but it's keeping, you know, your community, uh, you know, positive and going right. forward. Right. I think, well, you know, it's what I experienced as a child. I was one of the children that was bullied and um, people didn't like me or they talked about me. 
Um, you're too skinny. You're too whatever. You all of these things. And at a certain point, you have certain people that in your life that just love you regardless, and they promote you, and they are your biggest supporters. And so with that, um, you become you become your you thicken. Your skin gets tough, and you don't care what people think about you. And so a lot of times, my messaging now is just that. It we only live once, right. so. Don't sit around just because someone else is not drinking a red wine or just as, just because someone is drinking a rosé and you know nothing about a rosé, you tend to not wear it. Or just because someone is wearing leather pants in the summertime and you think, oh my goodness, why don't I wear that? If you want to wear leather pants in the summertime, you wear it. If you want to wear white beyond Labor Day, you wear it. Don't let the world and these Secular colloquialisms or cliches define who you are as a person. It's 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 sickening. Yes. Um, I was raised by a family that told me to respect two words: love and difference. Hmm. You can love people, and then if you respect their differences, you're winning. So most most of the time, I just tell people, "I love you regardless. You do you." I'm going to do me. You're different. I know I'm way different and outside of the box. I don't even know if they created a box for me. This but is the only box you've ever been in. Right I mean, not know the box big enough to fit me in the box, <laughs> to be honest. All right, Patrick. Well, we're starting to come towards the end of the show. And I always love to give everybody some fun. I know. It's not fast. I know. <laughs> but I always love to give everybody a few moments for final thoughts. And if you have any messages you'd like to share, any passing uh, droplets of wisdom that you would like to pass on as your experience in fashion, entertainment, wine, please do so now. <laughs> Who goes first? Is that you? Oh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. I'm coming back to Wine Antics, and um, this has been an amazing experience. I was petrified to be on live. Oh, my goodness. I've never been on live. I think I might take my Facebook live tonight. No, just kidding. I won't be doing that. Um, but this has been an amazing experience. Um, I think you all can find me on Wine Antics website, but Patrick T. Cooper is my name. And I look forward to coming back to celebrate more great wines. We've got a lot of wine to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of wine to talk about. We always have wine to talk about here. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, and I want to thank you for being an amazing, very special guest. Uh, please stick around. There is there is. Much more of Patrick Cooper to see tonight and in the future. Stub, to you, any final thoughts? Oh, first of all, I want to thank Patrick for coming on. This has been a you know fun, fun and and somewhat poignant uh, chat here. I really do appreciate your time, Patrick, and and coming on and spending time with us. And other than that, I want to thank everyone else for joining us. And once again, give apologies, to Andre Robinson, for running out of time to have her on the show. Hopefully, we can get her on next week. Stubb, you sounded thoroughly sad about that right there. Yes, Andrea Robinson, you you will come to us. You will be with us. <laughs> that sounded kind of creepy and stalkery. No, we really hope to have her on. She's an amazing woman. Um, my final thoughts are to tell you guys, thank you so much for joining us here. We really appreciate you being here week after week uh, because the, the antics are real. Like this, the antics are real. Uh, next week... Big things coming up next week, as I talked about at the top of the hour. Uh, Mark Suspic from Wine Living will be joining us to discuss cocktails to keep you warm. We're taking a, a wine guy and we're throwing him into the cocktail world. But I'm not worried because he does some amazing YouTube videos that have plenty of different beverages in it. So stay tuned next week, uh, 9 p.m. Uh, on the 23rd or hashtag Thirsty Thursday is for Wine Antics Live. Cheers. Yeah.